Welcome to another episode of the Mind Duck Books podcast. This time we are discussing the Czech quirky classic comedy from 1942, Saturnin. And to appreciate some Czech goodness and humor, Chan came back. How are you doing? I have a sore throat. <laughs> That's too bad. So I'm <laughs> trying my best. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like you have a sore throat. <laughs> How does someone look? <laughs> oh, well, I guess they, I guess if they're really suffering. You look lovely as usual. It's oh, fine. oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so I never say this, but I should. My name is Philip, and I am trying to find interesting books and make you read more books. And I have made Chen read a very famous Czech book, and I'm very happy we have somebody who isn't Czech to give some perspective. Mm-hmm. How much were you forced into reading this, Chen? I enjoyed the the cover. I, I liked the Czech <laughs> cover more, but I enjoyed the, I guess, the American cover. I, I don't know, the English. British, yeah. The, okay, the, the British cover uh, then. So I was like, yeah, this looks, you know. And yeah. okay, and I know people are like, don't judge a book by its cover. But what I'm saying is it has a cover that represents the book well <laughs> so <laughs> what i thought about when i saw it that's what the book was and so i enjoyed it illustrations are cute yeah and this is a beloved book it's very very old and everybody in the czech republic loves this so much and there's a movie <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's also a tv show so czech listeners brace yourselves uh, I, even though there are not many left i don't know if the people left <laughs> Or if there are so many new people or a combination of both. But when we started this podcast, there was about 30% Czech listeners. And nowadays it's like 3%. Oh. So there's like a variety of countries. And the remaining Czech listeners, they were very... Not they. I talked to one, <laughs> maybe two. And I asked them how they felt during our episode about Dashenka. Mm-hmm. Check out two episodes back. I think it's 59, maybe. And I asked uh, Martin specifically, how did he feel mm-hmm. when you call Dashenka an asshole? <laughs> <laughs> it's not Dashenka's fault, but Dashenka is a little ass. <laughs> and he said he has to agree, but his heart hurt a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so for listeners that listen to this episode... I'm sorry. I said the dog was bad, but the dog is bad. I'm not, not, but but I should be clear that the dog is bad because the owner didn't train it properly. We talked about it, and it's very very clear, and it's very understandable. But still, <laughs> Czech people can't bear the criticism of Tashenka. But but I like the book. I mean, I like the book. It's nice. <laughs> So today we'd like to discuss the beauty of the Czech language. We have a word in Czech that literally means flowery. Mm-hmm. And people constantly say that the Czech language is flowery. It mm-hmm. blooms like a flower and it sprouts in all directions mm-hmm. and it's all wonderful by and all these suffixes Sounds and prefixes. Sounds more like a tree. Yes. <laughs> that would be a scary flower. <laughs> maybe, a, uh, maybe a rose bush, I guess. <laughs> so did you feel like the language in this book was in any way different or was it easy to read well (laughs) i mean maybe there was some like okay i can imagine by how it was translated or yeah the person that translated it like the tone of the book i can tell by the tone of the book that there probably was this floweriness that you talked about like it's written in like a story telling way but for adults and Mm. i mean that is in like you know like how kids books are usually you know like storytelling like let me tell you this story or whatever or you feel like you're being told a story and not necessarily you're just Mm -hmm. you know i know that sounds redundant and weird but i think i think people know what i'm talking about (laughs) so i i think i can guess about what they mean by that flowery thing because it felt like kind of the tone was appropriate hmm. for the uh, book. <laughs> so it was uh, translated by uh, Mark Adrian Corner, who is British. Mm. And the book was written by Zdenek Jirotka, who is a Czech writer. Uh, a big part of the story is Czech idioms and like play on words and Czech mm. like puns and things like that. So I was very curious if they were translated well enough. So we have some examples for you later. Yeah. And also the names of the characters were completely changed. So. Yeah. 
Except for Saturn. Except, yeah. Well, I guess we don't say Saturn. Saturnin. Excuse me. Saturnin. Saturnin. <laughs> I just say Saturnin. But okay. I don't know how to say it. You're saying it's just fine. <laughs> it's completely fine. So we'd like to talk about all those things. But before we get to it, as usual, how did you like the book in general? Would you recommend it? What's your impression of it? I, I am very biased because I'm Czech. I mean, I gave you a rating before. I probably give it a six, which people would say that was bad. But I mean, I have a, a point scale for books. And for one, like, I don't find the book to be profound. So it loses a point. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel it feel that I maybe learned something new. So I uh, maybe it loses a point. Like a new cultural perspective, even though it's a Czech book. Mm-hmm. But six is good on my scale. I think it's quite enjoyable to read, which is number one. I feel all a book should be that. Hmm. If it's fiction, it should be meant to entertain in yep. some way. So even though I only give it on my scale, you either have this point of entertainment or not. It, it's, a, it's a powerful point. So <laughs> I, 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 I give it a six, but not because I think it's bad, but just because it's lacking some things. But yeah, if you're looking for something, you know, you know, sometimes you want to read a book, but you don't want to get into a book. Like maybe it's not like you don't want to read a series or you don't want to know all these things about all these characters or, hmm. or you don't want to like have your ideas influence. Maybe you're a writer and you're like, I want to read something for inspiration, but I don't want to see an idea. But oh, man, I, I, you know, whatever. So it's a book you can just pick up and read and just enjoy and the character's themselves are dynamic but it's not like a sci-fi of crazy backgrounds or whatever <laughs> it just they're just living a few days of their lives and it's very like rich and fun it's one of those books where people aren't just plopped onto the page they mm. always say that's a thing in bad writing if you just need someone to be there <laughs> just to be there that's that's bad and it doesn't do that ever yeah. so I think it's a very nice book that anyone could read. Yeah, right. anyone could read it. That's Yeah, it's very that's... relaxing. Would you call this a slice of life? <laughs> I, I, to me, the nuance of slice of life means that something has to be a little bit hard. Mm. And I don't think there's much difficulty here. Yeah, but true. it is real. Like, mm. it's fake, but it's real. Real <laughs> fiction? Is that a thing? Like, I, I don't know. It's I wouldn't say slice of life from mm. my interpretation of it. I would disagree slightly with the like message or having something to say. I think it has something to say. Mm. And I think the strongest part is the characters. Mm. You always say in the sci-fi, the characters are non-existent and they are just there to be, you know, somebody there to witness the grand ideas of space exploration and all that. So in this book, it's like you can imagine all the people really well, mm. even though they're not described physically too much but what they do and i think that's exactly the point why people love it so much like czech people love it so much because there are so many people you can imagine who are exactly like the people in the book Mm. and we have all met on katerina katerina (laughs) katerina in czech we have all met somebody who's like milos uh, in english his birdie yeah yeah Yeah. we'll talk about us later so and we all wish we had somebody or we were like somebody like about saturnian yeah I, I (laughs) i think this is like uh, thing each country has. I've been talking about it recently because we watched. Uh, I've never uh, watched much anime, and we watched a little bit of uh, One Piece, mm-hmm. and it's a huge thing in Japan, mm-hmm. like super big thing, millions of episodes, and mm-hmm. yeah, manga. And I finally understood why it's so popular. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what I said? <laughs> yeah, like because he kind of does what he wants, and usually people of Japan don't. Mm-hmm. do what it is that they want to do they just don't i feel like this is like a national dream manifesting itself in fantasy and fiction and in japan it's very clear that people are always in line they cannot say what they think they always have to do everything as they should they cannot break any rules and they cannot really live out their dreams because it would be too outrageous <laughs> and if they do something they are instantly embarrassed and completely like uh, stuck up and just cannot do anything meanwhile the main character of one piece it's a naive like kind of dumb boy who really nearly does anything and his literal mission in, in life is to help people realize their dreams mm-hmm. and live their like wildest fantasies without having any shame for anything and failing at it and being very happy about failing at it mm-hmm. which is absolutely impossible when you're Japanese yeah. <laughs> well don't say Japanese though because we do have to be clear about that when we say things like Japanese or something like Czech or whatever it's because we have to name the people 
the same name as the nation. So okay. we mean it in the sense of like you might say someone's American. Who's that? That's all kinds of people. And Canadian, who's that? But in Japan, most people are, well, you imagine okay. the, the, okay. the ethnicity to be politically correct. So people in Japan. <laughs> be politically correct. People embedded in the Japanese culture. Traditional, yeah. Traditional, traditional. Japanese culture. They cannot imagine just doing whatever. And I yeah. think this is the same in Czech, Czechia. Czech Republic, renamed to Czechia, they, especially during the war and uh, Cold War and like communism and Nazism and all this, there is always like this kind of downtroddenness, like people cannot speak their mind, they always punished for what they say and they have all these like social issues and I'm not talking about political issues or anything serious, I mean just like in the family, with, with your friends or at work. And it's kind of quirky and nonsensical, but you still are very extremely bothered. And Saturnian can solve it very effectively, and it's funny. So it's like the <laughs> ultimate like fantasy: how to solve your daily misunderstandings, disagreements, and like bothersome people around you. <laughs> and I think uh, secretly, everybody wishes he would they would have like Saturnian skills. Uh, people who are in the Czech Republic. So <laughs> I think that's another one of those like fantasies that are popular because. Everybody wishes the same thing. <laughs> I think it works yeah. like that. I mean, uh, yeah, I think it's good for that. Obviously, I don't know the family dynamics in the Czech Republic and the USA. We just be like, fuck off. But, <laughs> like, you literally don't get invited. And if you weren't invited, we tell you to go away if you show up. So, so maybe we're bad for that, but we feel happier. <laughs> but... Yeah. Let's put it this way. Maybe I give the book a six again, not because it's bad, but I'll give the author a ten for how how he wrote the book and for when he wrote the book. Mm. It's a very pleasant book for a time that was probably hard to write something pleasant. Yes, that's very much so, why it was popular. Yeah. So uh, credit to all those artists and things out there that could make things nice mm. while really bad things were happening around Czech them. Czech nation really needed it at the time. So, yeah, so. <laughs> so thank you, Zdeněk Iradka. Yeah. He was born in uh, 1911 and uh, served as infantry in the Czechoslovak army and lived through a lot of stuff and died 92 years old. So oh. finally somebody who lived a long life and yeah, was Czech. He thank did God. live Some, a long somebody, time. Somebody, finally. Because he was happy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yes. <laughs> Just use humor for its best and try to live a humorous, happy life. Then that's, yeah. that's the key to longevity. He, he worked for the newspaper and he was the writer. He was also a bricklayer at first, which, yeah. which is funny to me because we always joked with my friends when I was younger that if we can't pass any exams and go to high school or university, we would become <laughs> bricklayers because that's the best job. <laughs> <laughs> so he did actually become a bricklayer and then he was a writer. And uh, he was very successful. He wrote a bunch of uh, satirical comedy books other than Saturnian. Uh, there is also like a detective story parody uh, series. It's called uh, A Man with a Dog. And it's supposed to be quite fun. And a bunch of other books. What he's criticized for, and I didn't know at all, mm -hmm. is that he took heavy inspiration from British writers, namely J.K. Jerome. Do you know this guy, maybe? Uh, that sounds really yeah. familiar. He's a British writer who writes comedy. And also yeah. P.G. Wodehouse. That sounds familiar, too. So I'm just bad with names. So people out there that are like, oh, you don't know literature? I can't remember anybody's name. And the uh, references and the uh, connection is much stronger than I thought. So there is this character called Jeeves. Uh, yeah, I know Jeeves. You know so, Jeeves. Yeah, so then I yeah, know okay. exactly. <laughs> and I remember Jeeves because it sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> so have you? How, how do you know Jeeves? Or what? Uh, well, first when I was a kid, I know from the the search engine, Ask Jeeves, because like, everybody was yes. like, oh yeah! yeah. And then I was like, why? I asked my mom, like, why is you know Jeeves and what what is he? Whatever. And she's mm -hmm. like, he's a butler. And she told me, you know, whatever. So that's that's how I started. But so um, yeah. Ask Jeeves is what became ask.com yeah yeah so originally ask jeeves yeah that, that was terrible when they got rid of jeeves like what were they thinking i immediately no longer went there i was like where's jeeves <laughs> so jeeves is uh, described as a creature of impulse mm -hmm. and uh, quirkiness there's also a short story called literally the creatures of impulse written by Wodehouse. it's just a quirky butler and uh, i guess the difference is that 
he's actually a butler for a rich guy. Meanwhile, Saturnian is just like a like a funny yeah. person for a funny character. But yeah, the connections are there. But as uh, some other reviews I read uh, say, it surpasses like it's different enough. So mm-hmm. like the character inspiration is there, but the story is differs a lot. Like it's very yeah. very different there. But what the translator did, uh, Mark Edwin Corner. He named some of the characters the same names like in the Jeeves stories. Oh, so Bertie yes. is a character from Jeeves. Oh. And Agatha is a character from also the Jeeves stories. Mm. But Agatha isn't in this book, I don't think. You said that, but I mean, the name might just be different. It could have been the, it could have been like the maid or it's cook. Okay, I it's forgot okay. about them. I, fo- I think it should have been like uh, in Czech, it's Katarina and Miloš. In mm-hmm. this book, they translated it as to uh, Auntie Catherine and the son... Uh, Birdie. Birdie, and then in the Jeeves books, it's Agatha and Birdie. So they took just one name to the Yeah, reference. but that might not be right. That literally might. I'd, I would look up right now with the name <laughs> of the maid and cook since you keep talking about it. Like, I think one of them might have been named that. To I be just... honest, I don't even remember there was a maid and cook. Yeah, because they went to go get food when they needed it, and then they got stuck for okay. reasons that we might say later. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's not important. It's just something I had no idea about. So but it's a connection. I'd cut him some slack because, like, do you think J.K. Rowling was the first to come up with the story yeah, of a magic of boy in a magic school? No, but she wrote a very good book. <laughs> so I, <laughs> so I say that's not quite fair. But yeah, okay. yeah. I think it's a lovely book. I would uh, wholeheartedly recommend it. And I was surprised there is a Czech, sorry, English version. Because I thought yeah. it would be only in Czech. I thought I would have to translate it myself. So the humor they describe is dry British humor. I don't think that's true. Mm. Would you, did you feel like it was British humor when you read it? Hmm. I guess not necessarily British humor, but I felt that it was like humor at the time when people were trying to be a little more sophisticated, which I say that in quotes because I don't give a damn. But like, you know, when it was the 1940s, I feel Mm. like a lot of people around the world were weirdly like trying to be posh even when they weren't. So Mm -hmm. I feel like it has a slightly higher brow of humor, sort of, in a way. But uh, if I were going to compare it now, like to I'm comparing it now to modern times. So I feel like yeah, I guess it seems a little more uppity. Maybe people find <laughs> that. Uppity. Well, I don't know the best way to put it, but like uh, yeah, people I, I often mean. find or attribute uh, British people with the kind of humor that's here, but I don't think they're like the only one. I, don't, I didn't find hmm. it to be British, and I have watched, at least watched, not read, but watched quite a bit of British shows, hmm. I guess. So, yeah. yeah. I'm asking because I was excited for you to read this and I was like, yeah, perfect example of Czech humor. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, it's probably British. Mm. <laughs> so it's not. Sounds like I, British I don't. people just claiming stuff again. I don't, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> they have to conquer humor now. <laughs> so. so outside of the search engine and the, like, the visual like depiction of the character of Jeeves, did you ever uh, read or hear or see any stories with Jeeves? No, because I mean, sort of, but I wasn't quite interested in it that way. And by the time I would have been interested in reading about it then I was put off the G's was nowhere around and then I was <laughs> poor G's <laughs> yeah well <laughs> but I assume it's a big thing in the US like it's a known character in the US I think for older people okay. I think so like how Sherlock Holmes mm. might be known I, I'm pretty sure G's would be because we often say it like I think there were TV shows in okay. fact that were based around it like there were butler shows oh, okay. that were also <laughs> but no, I don't think G's was used there was um there was one that was really famous and I forgot the name besides the French Prince or whatever like mm-hmm. like like ones where they depicted a butler a lot in the show yeah, that's, that's something I had no idea about I didn't <laughs> know Jeeves. so before we get into the spoilers I'd like to quickly talk about the characters and uh, look at some like examples of the flowery language or the idioms and the Czech idioms and try to judge if this book uh, stood up for the challenge and translated them well enough. <laughs> <laughs> so the characters, as we said, is Saturnian, who is like a quirky, cheeky, clever butler. Then there is uh, the main character who has doesn't have a name. Uh, they say it at some point. In the book, he doesn't have a name. In the TV show mm-hmm. and the movie, he doesn't have a name. Then there is uh, his auntie, so like you already mentioned, in Czech, Katarina, in this quotation, Katrin, her son, uh, Miloš in Czech, Bertie in English, 
And then there is a friend of the family uh, who's a doctor. In Czech it's Dr. Vlach. Mm-hmm. In English it's Witherspoon. Yeah. Sounds kind of funny, so yeah. I don't mind the translations of the names. <laughs> but Birdie, why didn't they just name him Milo? That's a name. Because reference, I think, oh, is okay. the only reason. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Reference to Jeeves. But... <laughs> okay, yeah. And there are other characters, but many of them don't have names, like the grandfather. They just claim grandpa. Mm-hmm. I don't think he has a name <laughs> in the whole book. No, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of yeah. fun. <laughs> Ideal book for me because I don't remember any names, so they don't even have the names. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I think I didn't know. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> in the TV show and movie, uh, it was adapted in Czech television. Uh, the main character is called Jiří Olitsky. So mm. in the movie, they actually do have the have the names. Mm. We did watch the movie, by the way. I yeah. didn't mention. This one. Yeah, there is two versions. There is a four-episode TV show, and then they cut that down to a movie that's one hour and a half. So the whole thing is like four hours, but there's like a shortened version. Mm-hmm. And I think it's pretty faithful, and the characters are awesome, because Chen said herself that they look like she would imagine most of them, <laughs> especially the main character. Oh. <laughs> and they did pretty well for the, the movie, like putting in what would have mattered to make the story. But there was like one thing that they left out that would have been pretty funny, but... It was, mm. it was done pretty well. Yeah, most of it was pretty well and done pretty well. And it was very well paced, I mm-hmm. think, for the story being a series of short episodes and anecdotes and jokes yeah. and not really having any direction, really. It was pretty entertaining and kept you interested the whole way, even though there wasn't any point for any of it. So <laughs> I, have to, <laughs> I have to give it I have respect for it because there's quite a feat to do because there isn't any real motivation for the characters. There isn't any like thing for them to achieve or overcome mm-hmm. it's more like they're having fun with life so yeah. uh, to manage to keep that entertaining for one hour and a half or even four hours is, is a challenge <laughs> yeah the, like what's the four hour one we watched the only one that was only like, yeah, yeah the four hour one is the four episodes for the tv show oh okay, so, okay so we talked about it how they have the, it's the same thing exactly but they just cut mm-hmm. it down and edited it to have a shorter movie. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Same then, actors. Oh, so. then they probably put everything in there and it was probably yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah. But the movie, I think, is enough. So, so. if you're curious about Czech uh, culture and Czech uh, humor and want to give something interesting a go, you can find this with Czech uh, dubbing, but English subtitles. There's no English voiceover, I don't think. But, it's not needed. It's just read. But you can find it with English subtitles. So mm-hmm. yeah, you can even download it online. So it's not... It's not difficult to find if you're curious. <laughs> the subtitles lack a little bit, but you'll get the gist. Like, okay. It's fine. Got on a tangent there. <laughs> a little bit lost track, but I was trying to get to the language, so the idioms. I'm going to give you a few examples, and I wanted to like judge as the ex or current language teachers we are, how huh. good this is translated, how well this is translated. <laughs> already made a mistake. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> So one of the idioms that they use, usually that's kind of a punchline to a joke or it's kind of the base of the humor because Aunt Catherine is super passive aggressive and angry all the time and Mm -hmm. she keeps telling people to go to hell using idioms. She's so persistent, Mm -hmm. more than passive aggressive. This is so Czech, by the way. Oh man, if Uh, I were Czech, I'd give her a smack. Everybody knows a Catherine who's Czech, I'm sure. (laughs) So, if you don't know it, Catherine, it's you. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so, for example, there is a very common Czech idiom. Whoever digs a pit for another falls into it himself. Digs a hole for someone else and they fall into the pit themselves to the devil willingly, something like that. Okay, or okay. befriends the devil willingly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, something. Yeah. So I think that's pretty accurate from Czech. Do you say that in English? I mean, no, but to be fair, in English, even if I haven't quite heard some of the things that she says, like, anybody can make a reference to anything, mm. in, at least in American English, you can say whatever you want. So it, it felt like they were just bad idioms or just okay. like her, not a translation error, but for the purpose of making the character being nonsensical, because they're always saying she's being mm-hmm. nonsensical. So yeah. it, it, I think it, it works. Yeah, but well, you already answered my question. <laughs> I was checking if it made sense, even though you don't actually say those things. Mm-hmm. In yeah, 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 yeah. That so that, sense, that's, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another one was that he who laughs uh, last, laughs the longest. Is that the thing that's said in English? Yeah, but usually people just 
in in it uh, he who laughs last and they don't say what okay but, but it is a thing I'm, <laughs> yeah, because of, i'm not yeah. sure at all which of these are actually a thing in english but... no yeah i mean yeah okay we say this a lot is the injured are immune to mockery or the the constant drip mills the stone away this one is like translated well because we don't say the constant drip mills the stone away but we say the Uh, jar with the handle was carried around so long until the handle of the jar ripped off. Yeah, that ours is better. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, well, you can say that short in Czech. It, <laughs> and it sounds nice. It's just like I'm trying to translate uh, okay. it well. Okay. <laughs> you can imagine the big, uh, not jar, but like the mug, the mug, like a like a really huge mug people would take to the pub for beer. Oh, They would have like two beer liters mug. of beer, yeah. like into it. Yeah, I don't know what you'd call it. Beer mug? I don't know. A, a giant vase with a handle. Ah, okay. <laughs> Did they have the old decanter? Like, dang. Like, it's like a it decanter, but it's made of porcelain. Ah. And it's, like, really big for, like, two, sometimes five liters. It's got, like, a giant handle you can, like, grip with your fist. Mm-hmm. And you walk on the street with it to the local bar, and they have drought beer. They just oh put drought beer into it, you pay, and then you take it home. Oh, wow. My father would send me to go and get it with the beer and you would like carry it back and then at one point the, the handle would slip <laughs> off because it's so heavy and so much beer we like <laughs> <laughs> that's why people say it i see that makes sense yeah i wonder if somebody still does that if you're a che- if you check and if you're listening and you still have this giant beer decanter and you still go to the bar to the local pub to get the beer please message us because <laughs> this sounds so old to me why would i say it? <laughs> it sounds like i'm from the medieval times <laughs> Yeah, so I think that's uh, about it for the non-spoilers. We would recommend it. It's something very, very different. Yeah, but you should say, like, it's not so much the phrases that she says are, like... I mean, sometimes they're really... They are stupid. But sometimes they're phrases that people do say. But the point is that she always says it at times that make absolutely no (laughs) sense. Like, maybe someone trips over something and then she would say like a person who digs a hole for another and then falls in makes friends with the devil willing what, 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 what does that have to do with <laughs> tripping over something and so that's the that's the part that makes it funny i guess <laughs> yep. she, she loves it she just, yeah, she she just, just does constantly it. says yeah. it i guess it's a way to show that you're more clever and better okay so if you want to read this please stop listening you go to into a short summary of the plot and look at some of the jokes and our favorite moments i guess so the story starts with a super famous scene everybody talks about this constantly who's check and there is even a place in prague where you can go and supposedly it's still there that if you either get the secret menu or it's already on the menu or if you like make a reservation and book the whole place something has to happen i haven't done that but it's possible mm-hmm. then you can get those donuts and each uh, it'll happen so, That's so, <laughs> so there is a scene where the main character sits in a like calm uh, picturesque nice prague cafe and there is a huge pile of donuts on the on the table And those donuts are not English donuts or American donuts. They look like a huge ball and there's jam inside of them. Yeah, jam-filled donuts, like jelly-filled yeah, donuts. But they're not like a like a donut shape. They're just, they're just like a sphere. Is that just the same? I mean, we have donut holes. We don't usually put them, put jelly into them, but they're like this. Okay, I don't know. That's okay. <laughs> but but they're not, ours aren't filled with jelly. The, the, so. It's uh, called kobliha in Czech. <laughs> Different kind of donut. Okay. And it's uh, with powdered sugar on top. It's mm. very oily. And very fatty and stuff. So, Dr. Vlach or Dr. Witherspoon has a theory that there are different kinds of people. People that just kind of ignore those donuts. Like, maybe they looked at them, but they don't do anything with donuts. They don't, mm-hmm. like, eat them or test them or whatever. Yeah, they don't care. All of you need to die. <laughs> but, but, I mean, it's donuts. But, but all right. Need to die. I mean, if they're not your donuts, fine. But if they're at your table and technically you can have them, what are you doing with your life? Take a donut. <laughs> so anyway, there's these people that don't do anything with yeah, the donuts. So that's group A of people. Group B. Uh, I think they, like, maybe eat them or something. I don't remember what happened with the group B. Well, they look at it and it seems like there is way too many of them because it's a Czech, Czech cafe they serve way too much food mm-hmm. and there's way too many of them to eat for yourself and it would be fun to do something else with them such yeah. as throw it into somebody's face yeah. and they imagine it but they don't do it yeah and group C they actually do it yeah 
basically yeah. some people like to do nothing some yes. people like to imagine things and some people like to imagine yeah. and do things yes, yeah. so i think that's like the message of this book i was mentioning it's kind of like how to have how to be more joyful about life and if you think something is not worth doing because it's silly it might be worth doing it because it gives you something to live for and mm-hmm. do something fun and have some you know cheer in your life mm-hmm. so supposedly if you call this restaurant in prague and book the place they they can uh, <laughs> arrange a food fight <laughs> with <laughs> donuts <great. laughs> that's great. i've looked it up online many times and there is a website which offers it but it's like years old so i don't know if it's still there but if it's not there because everybody in prague knows this story i'm sure that if you ask for it it will happen somewhere so if you're, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're going to prague on holiday and you like this kind of humor just go to a random cafe and ask about it and if they're fun it might happen <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so that's how the story starts. And of course, uh, Saturnian is group C. The character, the main character, you would say, is group B. And uh, I guess Miloš, uh, and B- aka Bertie, is group A. He doesn't do nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but at first, the main character kind of does nothing. He, mm-hmm. like, sort of does more as the book goes yeah, on. Because yeah. I think even the doctor said something about him being, like, the, yeah, the yeah. group A or something. <laughs> He never said what kind of doctor he is, and they never say it either in the book. He could be a psychiatrist, he could yeah. be like a normal doctor, I don't know. But he's kind of like a fun guy who likes to visit, and they talk about these things, like how to live a better life, and yeah. what would be better uh, for the main character to do, because he's got uh, like a normal office job, and he's kind of bored with life, nothing mm-hmm. special goes on. And it's the doctor who finds the butler, I think. And that's ah. his... Or it's in kind of implied. I I don't think they say it directly, but I think that's the doctor's way to make the main character's life better. So mm-hmm. they, he finds this like butler who makes who makes the main character's life hell, but not really hell. Just makes nonsense happen. It so pushes there's... him out of group A. <laughs> yes, so he, he's yeah. <laughs> pushes him out out of the comfort zone, but in a very Czech way because usually people talk about this in the sense of you have a dream and you have to work hard or do uncomfortable things in order. to to have the dream happen Mm -hmm. this is more like you have nothing going for you and there's nothing happening in your life so if you're gonna do anything nonsensical and silly to have fun Mm -hmm. (laughs) and not really accomplish anything Mm -hmm. but have fun with it so i think that's like a different different path out of the comfort zone (laughs) yeah so uh, i'm not sure what happens exactly in the cafe do they start uh, throwing the donuts or he was the character was like recounting that he was upset that the doctor told him the story because he even the way he talks about these types of people he's like really upset about it because the doctor called him like group a but at the same time he was criticizing the other groups the main character yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he was like he said i'm in group a and then i don't do anything but the group b wants to have a you know a food <laughs> fight what is it like he, it's like he misses the point of the story yeah, i guess yeah, yeah. so or he is both insulted that he, he He's thought of as a man that does nothing, but at the same time, like that him, but he would be, he believes that these are the other options, then him doing nothing is perfectly fine. So, <laughs> so I, I thought even though in the movie they're together and they're talking, mm. I thought the doctor in the book had already like left and he's recounting something oh, okay. about what, but I don't think anyone actually through anything i think he leaves in, in the book i don't, I don't remember know. but in the movie the doctor's talking to the main character and then saturnin is pretending to be the waiter and he mm-hmm. has a plate full of the donuts and he by accident quote unquote bumps into a lady and drops the donuts into her cleavage <laughs> and that's like a joke to reference the the story makes for a good visual in the in the movie so the <clears throat> uh, main character gets this butler and Somehow it happens. I think he is under the impression that his life will become easier and he will have more free time and the butler will clean and do stuff for him. But meanwhile, uh, I think the doctor knows that stuff's going to happen. And immediately, Saturnin, he starts like spreading fake rumors about the main character and he keeps telling people that he's been to the North Pole and he's hunted tigers and he's like traveled the world and he's a renowned photographer and he's like a hero who's been on anime adventures but he doesn't tell the main character he's saying these things Mm -hmm. and people around him start to behave differently around him and they start to respect him Mm -hmm. the next step is they uh, move to a boat so Mm -hmm. one day when the main character comes home from work 
Saturnian informs him that they have uh, moved to a better mansion. And the mansion is a is a in Czech we say houseboat. Yeah, we say houseboat. Okay, I don't know if it's in English. It's it's German, uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, houseboat? Like how do you say uh, it? Houseboat. Oh, I said yeah. it almost right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a thing that people love. Mm-hmm. I never understood this. It's like a it's like an urban legend dream. I don't even know. Same. Like in the USA. Why do people want this? I don't know. You know what? To be fair, when I was a kid, I wanted this. And I can't tell you why I wanted this, but I wanted it. That was my American dream. I was like, yeah, I'm going to live in a houseboat. I I, I can't tell you why. It's kind of romantic in Prague. There is a huge river called Vltava, and you can like ride around the city on this like very wide river, mm-hmm. and you can go on parties. And people usually go like dancing on the boat. There is like a nice posh dinner, like, and you can like have a cruise. But some people just park the boat and they live on it, and that's it. Yeah, but I like I wanted that, and I don't know why. So somehow people really love this, and that's like a reference to this Czech culture because everybody wants this. So, yeah. so he just did it for him, like to realize this dream, to see how it actually uh, is. So they go to the houseboat he, he sold his old house he moved all his stuff there and the main character is very good about this i was uh i don't know yeah. this very realistic he's just like okay let's do it <laughs> I, think, I think it works he's he is very like okay anyone else like a reasonable person mm-hmm. like uh, usually would be like what is going on what's whatever mm-hmm. maybe get angry about it like maybe they wouldn't fire him or whatever yeah. but they would have a conversation about this but he just kind of <laughs> goes along with it but i think like the main character is kind of even though he's at first a very vanilla kind of person i think he's so vanilla that he doesn't even you know have (laughs) you know like he doesn't have too many qualms like Mm -hmm. he can get upset about things or he can be reasonable about i think he's just like just goes along with it because he can't even say no (laughs) yeah like i don't think he's happy but he's not mad mm. and he's, he's very concerned. curious but he's not yeah he's more concerned than like the, yeah he's concerned but he's sort of curious he's like somewhere in the middle of all of this and also the house already been sold and going through the trouble of undoing this is too much for him so he just like goes along with it yeah so like. and it's also I like think the, it works it's like the message for the reader, like, like be more like this guy, like, because he, like, nice things happen to him because he didn't say no to things. Yeah. So that's like the message, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have much resistance, I guess I should mm-hmm. say. I'm not saying he's a yes man or goes along with stuff, but he's not, he doesn't resist anything, yeah. <laughs> really. In the whole book, there's never a time he resists anything that actually happens. And I think that's what it is. He lacks resistance and that's his character flaw. But I really <laughs> like that he never gets angry. Yeah. And he never gets bothered. He never gets depressed. He he gets bothered, but he well, doesn't, bothered, but he he's... doesn't get like you know sad, depressed. Yeah, bothered. Like. But he gets very angry, but not like outburst kind of angry. And he he can just... he constantly knows like yeah. how to have fun. Like he does nice things and he enjoys a lot of it. So that's that's great. Yeah. So the very first night on the boat. A random guy from the zoo comes over, but he, they don't know he's from the zoo. Saturn knows, mm. but the main character doesn't know. <laughs> and the guy from the zoo says that there is Mark Aurelius uh, running around and they have to catch him. And he really needs the main character's help because he's heard he's a hero and he is very capable of like catching. He doesn't say creatures or people. He doesn't say anything. He just says that they really need to help catch Mark Aurelius and... Just go now because it's urgent. And, and, and he's again like, okay, let's go along with this. And Saturn is like pushing him like, okay, let's go. Yeah, yeah and he doesn't resist. Like, he, he just... Saturn is always there to make sure the main character goes. Yeah. So they drive around and they arrive to the center of Prague Square, which is probably the most high budget scene in the whole Czech movie mm-hmm. because they have an actual lion sitting on the tracks and yeah. an actual tram. And it's a lovely scene. And they find out that well, it turns out that Mark is... Mark Aurelius is the name of the lion who escaped yeah. from the zoo. <laughs> and the main character is there to tame the lion. Yeah. But before he gets out of the car, another person from the zoo runs in and he says, oh, we already called him, it's okay. Yeah, but, but then the <laughs> other guy, like, he still gets credited with... Yeah. with this. <laughs> he still gets credited with, like, the capture or taming. Like, I think the movie did that part pretty well because mm-hmm. in the book they kind of gloss over it because he just says like later somehow this 
beast is caught, but the zoo people thank him yeah. still or whatever. <laughs> so you're thinking, like, but what did happen? So in the movie, I think they did it well to mm-hmm. show how he got the credit, even though he yeah. didn't do anything at all. <laughs> it's, it's very cute because he's trying to like, get out of it and say something, and they don't let him speak. And yeah. before he's able to say anything, they already start thanking him so much, and he's, like, he's becoming a hero, and he hasn't said anything. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's a very, very fun way how you can get into situation and like enjoy it so much even just by not refusing it so it's, it's mm-hmm. kind of uh, all of the jokes and the stories are like this they're just yeah. like if you just go along with it nice things may happen and it might be a lot of fun so just why mm. not <laughs> so they come back to the boat and uh, the newspaper is writing about his um, him <laughs> as a hero and <laughs> yeah we also learned that the boat the houseboat Saturnin hasn't bought it, but he's borrowed it from some kind of guy who hasn't used it. Mm-hmm. And he's borrowed it under the pretense that they will go on a cruise or an expedition to the, I don't know, North or South Pole somewhere mm-hmm. with this boat. Yeah. And if they do, they will take pictures there and they will name the boat after the lover of the owner. <laughs> and he changes the name of the lover like three, three times because, <laughs> because he has a new girlfriend. So, <laughs> so that's uh, how he got the boat. Everybody just somehow goes along with it. Oh, wait, but also the newspaper, because of it, like, one reason the... So, the main character doesn't have any resistance, but one reason why the things that start happening start to bring him a little pleasure. Like, Mm because he didn't even like this. He's like, people are going to think that I'm... Like, Mm -hmm. he's worried about his reputation. But a love interest that he has Mm -hmm. starts to talk to him because she's interested in the story. And he thinks, okay, if more things happen like this, it wouldn't be so bad if she would talk (laughs) to me again. So he becomes... His emotions change uh, yeah. about it all. But... That's that's true. That's a, that's a good point. He plays tennis and he sees this girl, uh, and there's like a scene that's supposed to be super sleazy, but because it's like 80 years old now, it's it's like very funny, not sleazy because yeah. she's she's like bending over or something, but he doesn't see her. She he just sees like her knees or something, and yeah. that, that's enough to get him going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most detective knees he's seen. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, the girl, is, is, her name is Barbara. I think that's both Czech and... Mm-hmm. Uh, the Czech, Czech is Barbara. Or Bara, but uh, in English it's Barbara. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So then his auntie, Catherine, most famous character after Saturnin, mm-hmm. comes. She hears, she hears. Okay, so now we're back to the boat so yeah. we don't mess up like the, the, the readers. So don't confuse <laughs> the readers. So that's a side note. This, Back to the boat after, you know, Mark Aurelius in the newspaper and everything. And Catherine hears about the houseboat and she must have it because she's also got this dream. So she takes her son Milos and they go immediately on a visit to the main characters. But here we should talk a little bit about Aunt Catherine and her son before we say what they do. Okay. <laughs> now already talked about her in the first part. Like, she's very obnoxious, basically. <laughs> yeah, so uh, somewhere in here, I forget where, the main character had maybe already talked about her or when she shows up, he talks about her. But for someone that's not Czech, okay, I haven't necessarily met this kind of person, but I can imagine this kind of person. And when I say <laughs> I haven't met this person, I guess people know how... Americans are, some of us, I guess, would put up with this, but most of us would, you know, tell people to go away. Like, we're not, <laughs> we're not having it. I guess if you're in a really religious family, you might not tell your parents or elders mm. to go away. But if you're not, then you tell them to go away. <laughs> so anyway, she's just very, like, melodramatic and not melodramatic as in, like, the kind where it's annoying, but you're just like okay whatever this person's like fine like they're not Mm -hmm. really trying to be a bother they're like a like a teenager that's Mm -hmm. always whining not like that that's that's better (laughs) she's melodramatic in the sense that she also has to talk about it all the time like she can't she can't shut (laughs) up yes that's the problem she will not stop talking stop talking (laughs) so like she won't hush so that's the part that makes her like the worst and even if you're sort of on her side in some way there's no way to make her stop if you're on her side she's gonna keep going if you're against her she'll keep going if you're like (laughs) there's no so it's a constant just 
a mess of stuff. I can imagine you would say to this woman, if you're trying to be civil, let's say you didn't even know her. Let's say you're just mm-hmm. an acquaintance and you were just like, oh, you have a lovely dress. She might say, oh, thank you. When you wear dresses, you really shine. That's what someone <laughs> told me when you blah, 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 blah. And then, like, she would just go on, like, like, calm down. And then you might say something like, you know, have a, you know, a nice day and be trying to leave. And I could imagine you're saying, like, oh, but the bird who was born in this time, she'll never fly like they would if they were born at another. Like, and then she would go on, like, about her woes and things like that have happened to her in the day that have somehow ruined her chances of the rest of her day have been going well but then she'd wish you well for wishing her well and then blah 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 like shut up <laughs> shut well, that's, up that's one side of it but it's not the side that's the bothersome side that's, it's bothersome to me <laughs> the, the thing is that she gets all what she wants always and she's there to just inform you that she's come to claim what she has to oh, claim well, that's true. and that's the check like passive aggressiveness yeah. that, that always happens there's she wedges there's, in there there's something like she wants and she doesn't have any claim for it or any reason to have it and she just goes there and takes it and then that's informs true. you she took it that's the character that's like that's like the, the check thing we write right. like she must have everything her way and there is no other saying there's no saying no like to mm-hmm. her and then this is like the battle of cultural like appropriate politeness because of course you can say go away that's not okay but we can't do that as czech people in czech language it's the same like in japanese like mm-hmm. you can't really say like no go away stop so we can't do that so you're just sitting there and she just can't stop talking and she's taking all the things from you and you can't do anything Ooh, cover your ears <laughs> like anything no, 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 she's already taking them and she's walking away with it and she's oh, just talking okay. and talking and talking and you can't just like grab her and stop her because that's things you can't do so then you could then you just <laughs> no if you're a czech that's the couch you can't so then you just stand, stand there and then you're just abused and you're just like like, how have I been stolen from by just having a conversation? And then Saturnian just solves it, and that's why he's a hero. Yeah. <laughs> that's very true. She really just gets in there. Like, she wedges in there. But what I meant by her hey, hey, never stopping Both. talking... No, 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 not just that. What I meant was, to me, the side of it that was letting her get her way is that no one shut her up. Like, if you don't... If you let her keep speaking speaking she gets to keep saying the things that mm-hmm. she wants to have or or do or the passive aggressivism i mean she still yeah. physically does stuff but i feel like it's made worse by having mm-hmm. her constantly talking because when they did tell her sometimes to shut up yeah. she would just huff and puff and go away exactly. she, she did go away. i mean she still did something in the background or yeah. found some way to star yeah. all up again but when like the grandpa would just tell her she was nonsense or other things like she got offended enough that she left and it was peaceful <laughs> for quite some time so of, uh, of so course that's there's a limit and people eventually tell her and they do tell her many times in the story but when you have somebody who's not a family member or who's not met you yeah. many times you can't really do that, and that's, then uh, yeah. and then it happens, and that's that's the that's the worst. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's, that's the curse of being Czech. <laughs> yeah, and I right. imagine many other countries have the same problem. Just too polite, and you yeah. can't really not be polite. So, uh, but yeah. but yeah, but anyway, she comes over, and then she also has like a son. She's like widowed for <laughs> funny reasons, <laughs> but but, but she, <laughs> her husband is just was sort of a chemist, but not a chemist. Like he made things. But he was making things in the most dangerous way. Like, he wasn't thinking about what you make when you throw things together. Like, mm. he was just throwing stuff together. But uh, her son is, yeah, spoiled because she really coddles him and really thinks that he's absolutely perfect. And, and yeah. yeah, so it's sad. He, he constantly smokes and he doesn't have any willpower. And he thinks of himself uh, as, like, the most handsome, irresistible, like, super cool person. But, but the no, sorry. The main character I thought sort of mentioned that he was kind of handsome, and then when I saw the movie, I was like, "That kid's not no, they, they handsome." Make, but... They make fun of it a lot in the movie. But he, <laughs> he's supposed to be kind of handsome, but very like you know, boyish, childish mm. kind of person. Yeah. So they get onto the boat and they don't ask uh, anything. They don't say anything. They just get in there and they just start living there. Mm. And they just explain why they are living there, and it makes no sense. But mm. the main character can't say no. Yeah, even when he's like, just why are you here? She's like, oh, why can't I be here? I have family. Are you just going to throw me out? Like, she just like, like goes it's like, exactly it's what weird or whatever. Exactly <laughs> yeah. what happens in real life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Saturnin uh, says, uh, do you want me to get rid of them? <laughs> and the main character says, yes. And Saturnin says, in an hour I'll be back and I'll take care of it. So Saturnin gets two masks. Uh, we have a holiday called St. Nicholas Day at the start of December. We know what, who St. Nicholas is. Yeah, but you don't know what he looks like. It's a Czech costume. Oh, okay. So, so it's like if, if Santa Claus has, has like a priest head. And not, yeah, not I know the, what St. Nicholas looks like. And he has a devil and an angel next to them. And this is a tradition that happens every December in Czech Republic. And people dress up in all kinds of costumes and they walk around the city and you can as a parent come and tell them oh come to our house and scare the children oh. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> it's usually like high schoolers or like university students they dress up and then they go into somebody's house and children start screaming <laughs> and the devil is supposed to uh, take the bad children stuff them in their bags and throw them in the bag in the like potato sack <laughs> and Take them to hell or something, and if they're bad, and if they're nice, the children and the, the, sorry, the angel will give them some sweets, and they have to prove it by standing in front of all of them and reciting a poem, <laughs> which is super funny, because you can very quickly and easily tell which children are guilty. It's like a, it's like a test. <laughs> If they can say it, they're fine. They get the checklist. They can't say it and start screaming, running away. Then, yeah. yeah, then they get caught. So he gets two masks uh, for the devil and the Saint Nicholas character. But wait, sorry, I have a question that's just off the side, not about this. Yeah. Uh, but is it supposed to be like the same, like you know, devil and angel, like your conscience? Yeah. Or your con. Yeah, your conscience. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like the, the hours are on shoulders. <laughs> well, it, it's all connected. It's not directly, but it definitely has to I do with it. <laughs> I was just curious. Did you know that in, um, I think that comes from the Quran, like they, they have an oh, actual, okay. one of their things is that there's a devil and angel that's supposed to be, what, but it's not really that. Hmm. It's like, here's someone writing down the good stuff about you, okay. someone's writing down the bad stuff about you. I think that's a trait so in all kinds of they, cultures. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it could be something that was adapted hmm. to, like, put more power in the... Like, you know, yeah. like, religion, oh, this is popular, we better take <laughs> something and add this and get the people back. It is so. definitely to detect who's bad and naughty, but I don't yeah. know if that's connected, but it seems like it's the same concept. Yeah. I was just curious. Yep. Okay. Sorry, be. that was nothing about no, this. It's fine. <laughs> So he takes these two masks and then he goes and waltzes up into their bedroom where Aunt Catherine is trying to sleep and Miloš is smoking again. You're absolutely right. But first, the, <laughs> the main character only sees Saturday go and then he he sees the <laughs> aftermath and yeah. later he asks what yeah, Saturday yeah, yeah. did. So the, he sees that they are leaving. And yeah, that's suddenly it. they rush out <laughs> and the main character is like, what did yeah. you do? <laughs> he, he gains a lot of respect for Saturnin and this is the point where we know that he will do anything Saturnin says. So yeah. it's so, like the, the character origin. like Yeah. <laughs> So Saturnin, so Saturnin said, explains that as they are the new tenants, they need to be officially informed that there is a huge vermin issue and uh, sewer rats keep running into the boat because the boat isn't uh, closed well and they can come through the boards and come out of the woodwork and they run all over the beds and the only way to not get infected and uh, die of horrible diseases is if they uh, wear these masks he brought them because that covers their face. And makes sure that when they fall asleep, the rats wouldn't run over their face and get some nonsense into their <laughs> mouth or eyes or something. And he uh, throws the masks onto their beds and says, thank you very much, that's all for today, good night, and leaves and closes the door. <laughs> and they both came running out of the boat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there are lots and lots of anecdotes and escapades. This is like a good example from the book. So I think we should skip forward a bit because we've already been talking hours. Yeah. But... Uh, before they get onto the holiday retreat, is there anything you wanted to mention or talk about? Um, not necessarily. I guess there wasn't too much. I just want to say in general that the main character, when I said about all of the like zero resistance at this time, he tells lots of little stories. There are rumors that he has heard about <laughs> Saturnine as well, and like mm -hmm. Saturnine has apparently gotten up to a lot of nonsense and it all <laughs> and it all seems like it's true from what he has shown yeah. when he's with the character and you're just wondering like how does he get away with all <laughs> of this stuff but he somehow doesn't get like arrested <laughs> or like any of like and it's pretty it's nonsense <laughs> it is nonsense so that's that's pretty much it and apparently saturnian has many many skills mm. And uh, we don't know which of them are true, but we assume all of them are true. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, all kinds of so he keeps dating with Barbara and they keep playing tennis but he's really bad at playing tennis so mm-hmm. Saturnin builds a giant wall on the houseboat for the main character to bounce a ball against it and play tennis yeah. to practice and stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's ridiculous so they become a little bit more acquainted with Barbara and then he has uh, holidays so he decides to go to like a villa or a place where his grandfather lives a little bit from, away from the main city And uh, he finds out when he gets there that Barbara also is invited and that Saturnian is doing. So mm. everybody gets there. And then, of course, uh, Aunt Catherine appears because she also yeah. got wind of that. So she got there too. So everybody's there. Yeah. She, yeah, she got wind of it. She was not invited. <laughs> she was not invited and she's there immediately with Milo yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> so they drive to this resort and uh, the grandfather is there and all kinds of escapades go down. This is like the main part of the book so like the first section we kind of learn about Saturnian and they are the houseboat then they go here mm-hmm. and then uh, stuff happens and they kind of get back and that's about the book <laughs> so after they all get there and they are surprised that Catherine's there and stuff they argue a bunch and uh, they all know each other and looks like the grandfather knows Saturnian a lot and they kind of hit it on well and they spend a lot of time together mm-hmm. meanwhile Miloš is upset that Barbara wants to be with the main character and not with Miloš because Miloš immediately yeah. assumed that she would like him because he's super handsome. And But this happens a little later because the main character is excited that Barbara will be coming. He's mm. been waiting and waiting and waiting, mm. but then he ends up breaking his leg and there's a whole thing uh, before twist, he goes to the hospital. Spraining his ankle. Not, not oh, well, he sprung his he sprung his his ankle because Saturday got his grandpa to get into a lot of shenanigans and one <laughs> of them was fighting and he fought his grandson and his grandson lost <laughs> immediately. So Saturday <laughs> told him jujitsu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he like, sprung his ankle and he needed to leave just as Barbara was kind of coming but like mm. there's this whole shenanigans with the hospital and Barbara comes to actually pick him up and mm. they become closer because when they're coming back it's a big storm going on and it's like flooded and everything and they just like there's only one bridge to get to this area and He's even saying to himself, oh, she has this idea about me that, you know, I'm this guy that just goes along. What should I say? Because she's like, should we risk it? And he's just like, floor it or say something and like, <laughs> like, and he's like, ha, ha, like thinking like this is going to impress her. And they, mm. they get, she starts to kind of like him more. Yeah. And, and now they're all in the house and yeah, Malone, she's all. Yeah, he's yeah. upset because like, yeah. and he makes like a bed and stuff with the. It's like a whole thing. Yeah. I like the scene. That's one of my favorites. That Miloš keeps smoking and everybody hates it, like inside of the house. Mm. And at one point, also Saturnin gets really fed up with it, and so Miloš starts lighting his cigarette, and suddenly, uh, <laughs> he, <laughs> suddenly he starts screaming, and he's like, his his mustache on fire, his mustache yeah, on yeah. fire, <laughs> and he grabs a blanket and starts smothering him. <laughs> and some, uh, somebody starts screaming, bring the water, bring the water. And suddenly he screams something like, not the water, bring sand or some shit. And then <laughs> like, starts throwing stuff at him. And he keeps like smothering him and rolling him on the floor. Meanwhile, he hasn't even started lighting a cigarette, of It's course. Really <laughs> so, so he does stuff like that. And then uh, Catherine comes in and she's like trying to console him and to, trying to like officially thank Saturn that he saved him. And it's all nonsense. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Which, by the way, that I guess takes a lot from Catherine because she doesn't like Saturnine at all, hmm. obviously, because yep. she finds him a bit impertinent. But yeah, that's that's funny. So basically, they're kind of just stuck here. That's the the problem, the mm-hmm. rain that I talked about. And like, over the next few days, they're just like doing or mm. they're just kind of like crazy people going a little bit crazy stuck in the house. Not that everyone's really crazy, but you know, you haven't been outdoors. You're mm-hmm. just stuck in this house with your family. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Just shenanigans go on. <laughs> they go on kind of like mini dates, Barbara yeah. and the main character. And I think they kiss. To get food. Like, do, they, do they kiss or maybe or something? I think, yeah, he, he does kiss her at one point. Like, I think when they're in the forest mm-hmm. together and they're just like kind of laying there. I think he bent down and kissed her on the head or something. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It's so like, super, super slow and old timey, like charming romance. Yeah. I miss this in modern media, by the way. I miss <laughs> it in real life. Not about you. I'm talking about <laughs> like, no, no, I. I, I love Philip very much. What I'm saying is, is that I think Philip is that kind of person. Just kind of takes it slow and it's so nice. And and like, but everybody else, you know, they meet someone and it's like, mm. like it's so 
over the top. Like, calm yeah. down, people. Slow down. Just enjoy <laughs> it. So I like the way they describe their slow kind of mm. romance, but without making it. Without making it seem fake, it seems real yeah. and it's slow. It feels very like realistic it. and very like considerate, I guess. Yeah, it's nice. Like it's, it's, nice, it's very, nice. It's very subtle. Like I, I don't remember any recent movie or book where a romantic relationship was subtle. Like it's right. never. It's always right. even when it's not blunt or too fast or when it's not like <laughs> even it's not too sexual or whatever. It's not enough. It's never. Like subtle, it's always like some drama or something goes yeah. down too fast or too slow or somebody's upset, Th- because that's why people are so upset in real life then because they yeah. expect something like that. But that's not what it's like in real life. In real life, it's more like in this this story. So it's more like it's... you do things together and it's kind of nice. And then if you like each other, it's kind of nice. And then you're just together and that's it. Like there isn't any <laughs> super drama. <laughs> like <laughs> it is like this though in real life because people are trying to achieve this and what happens yeah the just drama it doesn't turn out how they mm. want it to happen so they yeah they should just calm down please don't believe all this media stuff every once in a while somebody <laughs> does they just happen to me and they just hit it off and things just like go but i'm saying it doesn't have yeah it doesn't have to be that way and it it, it can be calmer like yeah. it is so subtle in the book the only other time i've ever seen something be subtle is when you know, sometimes you have like a, a book or a movie where they didn't focus on the romance. Maybe it's a sci-fi. Maybe it's whatever. But mm. two characters might have spent like a lot of time with each other and they don't hint mm-hmm. at anything that going on between them. But they have spent so much time with each other that later suddenly they hug or kiss yeah. or whatever. And you're like, yeah, probably. And But that's the only other time mm. that it's sometimes subtle. Yeah. It's never like a calm, regular situation and being subtle or it's mm-hmm. rare. So it's very, very pleasant to read yeah, it was their nice. romance. I was surprised. <laughs> it was like a jarring contrast compared to like 2024. Like, yeah. uh, like uh, how people have romantic relationships. Mm-hmm. Even this romantic like interest and the arc, these two characters... They ho- they go through all this adventure together, and even at the end of the book, they're driving to a new car, and he is like nervous to ask her on a date. Yeah, and she's like making fun of it, and then they then the book ends, and they're like, oh, we might go on a date, and that's it. It's yeah. like it's like it's like that's it. Like there's no, uh, yeah. So it's just nice. I like this it part. Is, I I I really like that too, and I try to tell someone like that in real life one time because well, they are having some relationship issues and. I was like, one big reason is like, yeah, people are always doing things like physical, like too fast. Obviously, so many chemicals are going on when you're (laughs) doing things physically that you seem like you really like someone. But if you just spend time to get to know them and talk to them, you will probably, one, save yourself some time. You'll immediately know who you don't Mm -hmm. like and don't want to be with. And two, you can develop a nice Mm-hmm. kind of relationship and that's what they did they weren't just suddenly like <laughs> knocking boots in the, in the in like the room at night while everybody was like sleeping they were literally taking their time getting to know mm. each other and even after all of that they still were taking their their time, time. just yeah. take your time i really appreciate this uh definitely my favorite thing outside of the humor that they never describe, they never say, like, the character is like that, the character is like this. The characters do a lot of things, and it makes them feel like they're real people and they're actual characters. That, so you can imagine what kind of person they mm-hmm. are. So it's, yeah. it's really well well done in that sense. I wish sci-fi had these things. Well, sci-fi <laughs> is too busy telling you about the world. Oh, my lord. Well, I, I'd like to, again, promote Orson Scott Card and, and the saga, oh, yeah. where the characters are the main focus, and people say yeah. it's not even sci-fi anymore. That's why I like it so much, because the characters there... Also have characters. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Let's not talk about it. Except for Violet or Valentine. Oh my god. Okay. Later. Okay. Later. Okay. <laughs> okay. She's useless. I love those characters. She's a hypocrite too. <laughs> but that's the point. <laughs> it's like okay. She's all. Okay. Let's not talk about it. I know. I know. Sorry. <laughs> I just I just I hate her. So they get stuck and they keep running out of food and people argue about who's going to cook and Catherine's upset and all of that. And then they completely run out of food, so they have to do something. So they decide to just walk back because they can't take the car because the bridge is broken and the car cannot get over the bridge. So they can they pack up all their supplies and there's a point made that 
they want to take some books. I don't remember why, but I remember one of the characters yeah. keeps getting the books. They didn't want to put books. I thought that's when Witherspoon was telling the story about when someone took books because they oh. go to his cabin, right? Okay. I thought that was the story he told. I don't know if anyone else took but books. They but they actually the went story. to his cabin. Yeah, yeah, but he tells oh, okay, the story the about okay, okay. how in that cabin healed a friend. Oh, or so somebody else. Okay. okay. I, I'm, I, I only remember those books, the story he told. So they, uh, halfway or somewhere along the way, they find this cabin from Dr. Witherspoon mm-hmm. and they want to get in to get some more supplies, but they can't open it. They find a note or, or they, he tells a story or something. Yeah. And it says that the key is at the bottom of this like lake. <laughs> so they have to go yeah. swim for the key. <laughs> and uh, they... But the reason it's there is because the, mm. the doctor had sort of tortured a student yeah. that was having some issue and he made him take these books up to his cabinet. It's a long hike and then he got there and like there's like a note that's like, oh yeah, I just wanted some books. There's no reason that you had to do that. And the person's really mad. And the doctor had like left a note also that the key was uh, like up in a tree and the guy had to like try to get it down and he was yeah. suffering for hours. And then he stayed there for days and he was really mad at the doctor, but somehow he was better. Like he got healed by those waters in the lake. So he, he threw the keys in there for the I think, I think he was water. trying to say the <laughs> same thing and trying to make the same point. Like a character got into something he didn't want to do at all, doesn't understand why, and was completely nonsensical and bothersome. And was very upset by all the nonsense. Mm-hmm. And at the end of it, had a great time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he had to carry all these books for nothing. He had to climb this tree for nothing. <laughs> and it was really funny. And instead of like storming off and being upset, he played along with it and he threw the key in the lake. And now yeah. everybody is more adventurous. So it was kind of like a beat. Yeah. So they resupplied this cabin though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they get the key, they sleep over at the cabin. In the morning, the main character falls in the lake again, and they make jokes about it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then they walk back and get safely back to the city. Oh, yeah, I guess I forgot about the thing at the house. That was dumb one time. Like, the, the actually, they're having power issues. Yeah, yeah that I was like the famous quick, scene, yeah. But they're just having, <laughs> So like, before they go out, uh, the right. original resort, yeah. Right, before, the, the, it turns out that they, they thought they lost power, but, like, Saturday had just sneakily turned off the switch and like the main character has like this epiphany in the middle of the night where he sees out the corner of his eyes like wait a minute like saturn you turn it off like it, it like just occurs to him so he because they don't, have, on. they don't have electricity and they have no power at all yeah. so he just realizes that somebody's just forgot to switch it on so that's why he goes yeah yeah so he goes to turn it on but miss barbara has or barbara has like rigged the doorbell or something to make noise like like to ring when it comes on so they'd mm-hmm. be notified but he didn't know that yeah and they, they it's all loud and stuff and it's middle of the night and he turns it off and then people are like are getting up there who's that and then he <laughs> like pretend he doesn't want to be caught in a weird situation so he instead of trying to explain he like tries to go back to his room but he fails and he tries to go to the window he almost gets shot by birdie <laughs> it's like all kinds of stupid stuff happens yeah. but but yeah that was yeah, actually like a, yeah. other shenanigans it's a action for, like, scene. So the main character is doing things like mm-hmm. he did something like he tried to lie about a story like not really lie mm. but like how he was just gonna just go sneak back upstairs like okay. that's something out of his character or he he goes to go swim in this little lake but I thought yeah. he, he failed because he was running or something like he he was doing things but mm. kind of failing but he kind of changed at that point he's kind of having fun with it and <laughs> yeah. he's trying to do things on his own yeah so that's why uh, Saturnin. Uh, later when they get back he kind of realizes that his job has kind of been done yeah so he's they get back to the city though and the bridge is back though. And it, the, was yeah. built, it was rebuilt so they thought that there was for nothing because the bridge already built yeah. and whatever but suddenly you can see that he doesn't need to uh, accompany the main character and the main character is happy with barbara and stuff so he's like kind of done his yeah. uh, his doing his bidding and he stays with the grandfather because the grandfather mm-hmm. Just they just get along well and they have a secret plan that's how the book ends. Yeah, but it's also mentioned that the grandpa gets hurt at one time and the aunt is like uh, she really wants his money and mm-hmm. she's like like trying to get him to pass even though yeah. he's totally fine. Yeah. There's there's this whole weird shenanigans yeah. thing about that and the main character it goes over his head that they're like making a joke or whatever. And it's, father it's pretends crazy, to be dying and writing yeah. his will, but in fact he's probably fine. But, yeah. but Catherine <laughs> believes it, and then he, in his will, leaves her no money at all. Yeah. So she's like, oh, they, like oh, that's what I upset, and yeah. So it's it's, it's just <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not stuff. so important, but it's just yeah. more shenanigans. But that's when uh, the grandpa really 
is like I really like Saturday because Saturday's also helping with this mm-hmm. charade. <laughs> so so that's one of the reasons why he stays. But yeah, like with the grandpa. Sorry, what was their plan though? Yeah, so before their plan, uh, the book ends with a wedding, or is it after that? that I think plan? it's. I think it's after. Oh, okay, so so but, yeah, you have the very very ending. Barbara and the main character they. They kind of play on a date. That's By the it. way, it's not their marriage, so don't be. We just told you they weren't Russian stuff. It just ends with a marriage. But it's it's not a, their somebody marriage. else's marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and we are like as readers curious what what Saturn is going to do next and what happened to the grandfather. So they started a new like a business, I guess, mm-hmm. and they uh, decided. The, they are appalled by the quality of recent literature, and they <laughs> they will correct the the nonsense in literature. So they they can be contacted, and a memoir or a book or like a document can be sent to them, and they will verify its truth. And I give an example how somebody describes a dramatic scene where a business owner uh, loses some money, and one of his employees also wants to marry his daughter, and they have into an argument, and then he passes out and has a heart attack and dies or something, and they, they, it's complete <laughs> nonsense. And they then they like replay the scene how it actually happened. Yeah, and they said this, this is not correct. No one does this, and like, what he really <laughs> said was like they. It's really funny. And uh, you would think that the corrected version is super boring and dry, but it's bo- equally funny. Like both yeah. both the original and the actual story. It's hilariously, stupidly, incense, incense, nonsensical, but in completely flipped like meanings. So what yeah. happened and why happened? So both things happened, but for completely different reasons. Yeah. And it's very fun to have that explained. So you can imagine that if this service existed, they could actually have customers because it is fun to read those things. <laughs> yeah. But it begs the question how they would find out what the truth was. I'm not sure that's so easy. <laughs> but yeah, you can imagine that Saturnian has his ways, so he would find out. <laughs> but I mean, but well, for memoir, well, I don't know, but that's the thing. They were just analyzing of what could be true and mm. just making up truths, but they yeah, said yeah. that it was true. Yeah, so, okay. so they can make up it. Oh, okay, I guess they're going to make it up. Yeah. So after we learn about this, then uh, the story ends with a wedding and for a while in the book they don't even say whose wedding and why it's there and I guess it's kind of a joke because we expect it's like the stereotypical ending of Barbara and the main character Yeah. but no, it's Catherine getting married again and stealing yeah. some money from somebody who's old and I don't know <laughs> it's just like her wedding again and that's the end of the book it kind of abruptly ends there isn't any, yeah. any like closure or whatever but I don't think you need it it's just like that's what happened and that's it <laughs> yeah like that last chapter is just because at least in the english version the chapters are named by their events like their mm-hmm. summaries of events happening so the last chapter has no words except for the summary of events which is the chapter name so mm-hmm. they just say yeah they got married <laughs> Goodbye. she got money and this is the end I'm like yeah. that <laughs> something we didn't say every chapter has a preface yeah and they always like it's kind of like the main character writing what happened. So yeah, he, it's like he, a diary. He's got the notes, like somebody what for this chapter, what happened in this chapter, and mm-hmm. then he has like a like a quote or like a thought, uh, some kind of wisdom. I don't know. Sometimes he writes something wise. I mean, I can I can read the. This is for chapter. I'll read a short one. Oh, that's not short. How about this is for chapter ten, and the the name of the chapter slash the notes is I tell my story. A romantic overnight stay, a night visitor, footprints in the sh- snow, and and he keeps going like this, mm. and he he finally finishes these notes, and then he tells you the chapter. But I like these notes because they also help me to remember what happened for stuff yeah. when I forgot. Like usually yeah, in books, a, you're that's like, true. what happened? But you just read it, and you're like, oh yeah, that happened. It's a very casual read, and you can just you know let it go and come back after a long time, and then you can mm. very quickly refresh yeah. what happened so that was clever at the end of this summary there's always like a like a theme or something i like that for chapters like one of the chapters uh at the, at the top he says no man can withstand the incredible weight of having hesitated about his bravery yeah and then the story is about like he was taming the lion maybe or something yeah, it's, it's like okay. a, it's like connected to what happened I don't know if they do it all the time, but it does. Well, sometimes they do it, and I like that it's actually, like, a lesson you learn, and you don't really know how. Yeah. You reference. (laughs) That's why I say it. Okay, I guess that's it. Thanks a lot for trying this. I'm glad that you could actually read this, because most of these quirky, like, famous 
obscure Czech stories. They are not translated very much. So would you want to read the sequel? There's a sequel, I didn't know. Uh, Saturn, Saturnian comes back or something like that. I never knew until recently. Uh, same writer, mm. wrote it a few years later. And it's same kind of deal, more, more shenanigans with Saturnian. Supposedly, people say it's okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm satisfied enough with reading this. It's enough. Yeah, I feel like I, me too. It's, it's a fun, it's a fun story. So, thanks again for joining me on this Czech adventure, and see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.